What's weird about this paper, you would think this is like something new. This paper is from 2006, uh, uh, January, January 21st, 2006. It's titled The Penis, A New Target and Source of Estrogen in Male Reproduction. I'm just going to read a couple parts of this, and then we'll get to kind of the conclusion here. In the past decade, interest and knowledge in the role of estrogen in male reproduction and fertility has gained significant momentum. More recently, the cellular distribution and activity of estrogen receptors, okay, ERB, an ERA and aromatase has been reported in the penis, all right? So they're finding ERB and ERA in the penis. There's a bunch of neurovascular bundles which have estrogen receptors. We're going to get to how important this is here in a bit. They go making the penis the latest frontier in the study of estrogen in male reproduction. ER, so estrogen receptors and aromatase are broadly and abundantly expressed in various penile compartments and cell types, meaning erectile tissues, uh, urethral epithelia, vascular and neuronal cells, suggesting the complex complexity and significance of the estrogen ER system in penile events, okay? Penile events would basically mean <laughs> erections. What they go on to conclude is some data generated thus far, although preliminary, appear to challenge the long-held dogma that overall androgens have a regulatory monopoly okay, of penile development and function. Now, I have come across some literature in the past where there's, uh, where I basically found that there's a bunch of estrogen receptors in cavernosal tissue. <clears throat> there's uh, neurovascular bundles, so I would imagine blood vessels that communicate with the brain uh, in the penis, which uh, contain a lot of estrogen receptors. The question really is, why would there be ERA to an extent, but predominantly ERB, and specifically in the endothelium, the lining of the blood vessels in penile tissues, and in some cases, like in some uh, locations in the penis, a lack of ARs, but specifically ERB. Why would this be the case? You know, does estrogen mediate erectile function and have, uh, is it infusing a little further into the monopoly that androgens have, like specifically dihydrotestosterone on erections, erection quality, uh, the growth and the development of a penis? This is a, a really difficult question to answer, but what I want to do is go over a pretty big piece of literature showing all of the, the abundance of estrogen receptors and where they are in corpus cavernosal tissue in the male organ and let's just postulate about why the fuck this might be but importantly you know for people with long-standing erectile issues due to vascular injury which typically tends to arise as a result of androgen deprivation but potentially also estrogen deprivation because that's what happens when you're deprived of androgens you're also deprived of estradiol could estrogen estrogen itself have a regulatory or a reparative role in erectile quality for guys with long-standing ED. Start video Cortex Labs is a performance optimization and hormone consulting company for men, largely doing TRT guidance. We've got a couple of different products ranging from the source list, like any anabolic androgenic compound that you can think of for a lot cheaper. If you have to circumvent your clinic, just get the source list. Uh, Torque Stack, uh, this is basically like Adderall without the side effects. Very strong stimulant, far better than Red Bull. Uh, that is 20% off right now. You can get that down in the description of this video. And lastly, I'm a coach on TRT protocol, redesign and restructuring, as well as long-term sexual dysfunction. That is primarily my specialty over the years. You can hire me for any the packages you can find at livecortex.com or down below in under a minute at our website. Okay, just as a preface here, we commonly think of estrogen as inhibitory to erections, and uh, this is why. The reason that we think of estrogen as inhibitory to erections is because it generally is in the presence of low testosterone. Even in the presence of high testosterone, call it 800 to 1200 nanograms per deciliter total test, slightly above the range free testosterone, estradiol past a certain range can be inhibitory, particularly at the penile base to erections. I mean, that, that's kind of been proven. What it seems to be the case is is with, with TRT doses, especially lower TRT doses, the lower your dose is, the lower estrogen should be for you to be in balance and to have erections. But the confusing part about this is that Pretty much every study on this is in the context of either low testosterone, so no question, lower testosterone and elevated estradiol, or lower exposure to androgens in the case of PFS, which is you know wh where you're not getting exposure to dihydrotestosterone, and elevated estradiol is problematic for penile tissues and typically does induce ED or erectile pathologies. But there are a bunch of ERB, or estrogen receptor beta, receptors that are 
a, a basically abundant in the male organ. And where this gets really interesting is in the sexual dysfunction forms. And, and by the way, this isn't new to me. You know, as crazy as this sounds, there are some sexual dysfunction people that I've got to actually give or suggest that they uh, execute the use of exogenous estradiol. This is a guy with uh, SSRI induced sexual dysfunction where estradiol, okay, just actually taking estrogen gives him libido back. Their condition is characterized by not only a muting of erectile function, sensation, genital sensation, the ability to climax, but a, a large muting, the complete absence of libido. Now, this guy ended up, so this is not all perfect for this situation. You probably need androgens. You almost definitely need androgens in this case if you're going to use estradiol to recover from sexual dysfunction, but ultimately it came with gyno, right? You know, it, at the same time, gyno, I know surges happen with this sexual dysfunction guy from using SSRIs, a guy with PSSD, uh, as a result of using uh, exogenous estradiol, but also libido came back. There's actually a, a channel on YouTube called Estrogen Theory, where a guy breaks down in this video here an entire protocol, which includes the use of androgens, obviously things like testosterone, but also mesterolone or provirin, but also exogenous estradiol. And according to this guy and some followers, you know, the th th this protocol is working well for people. Basically, TRT, HCG, a trial run of just androgens, TRT, HCG, uh, provirin. If that doesn't fix uh, sexual function issues, then bringing in exogenous estradiol while still keeping TRT and HCG as a base in the picture. And this tends to get some of these people better. The real question, though, is why? If this is in fact true, why does uh, administering exogenous estrogen, estradiol specifically, E2, uh, recover people's sexual function in the context of PSSD, PFS, uh, serious sexual dysfunction otherwise, but also in the context of the use of androgens concurrently? Well, to understand this, I think we actually have to start from the beginning. Published in a journal in endocrinology in 2002, uh, this is a, a paper that's titled Evidence for a Potential Role of Estrogen in the Penis, Detection of Estrogen Receptor Alpha and Beta Messenger Ribonucleic Acids and Protein. And what they found is that in the adult, so an adult male, there were estrogen receptors diffusely in the corpus spongioso. So this is a part of the uh, of the major part of the penis that, that uh, facilitates erections and collects blood. And the cavernose, so cavernose is the, the, the main sort of bulky structure of the penis. Since a bunch of ERs were contained there, they go, the present study provides the first evidence of estrogen receptor expression in the penis. Thus, our data add the penis to the list of estrogen responsive tissues in males and provides a base and insight for future studies aimed at investigating a functional role of estrogen in the penis, especially in development. So basically, this is kind of like baseline. This is like the, the ground foundation for what's to come in further studies regarding estradiol, uh, estrogen receptors in the penis. I mean, this is back in 2002 where they, you know, even before the study that said, hey, maybe androgens don't have a monopoly exclusively on penile function, estrogen might as well. This is before that. This is the baseline and you know, one of the first studies that I found on this. Moving forward, though, in 2004, this was first published in 2004, likely updated at some point. This is a paper titled Expression of Estrogen Receptors in Human Corpus Cavernosum and Male Urethra, where they go on to say a couple really important things. And the first of them is that the corpus cavernosum and corpus spongiosum smooth muscle was immunoreactive for the androgen receptor, as we might imagine. I mean, dihydrotestosterone is pretty epic at regulating penile function, uh, specifically via uh, binding to the ARs with very high affinity and staying uh, activated at the AR for quite a long time. But they go, the corpus cavernosum tissue was also immunoreactive to estrogen receptor alpha and strongly, strongly for estrogen receptor beta. Now, here's what's really interesting. They go endothelial cells, so the cells of the smooth lining of your blood vessels, were negative for AR, okay? So the endothelial cells, which manage and regulate the blood vessel function and thus blood flow to a great extent, uh, didn't have any androgen receptors. They were sporadically positive for estrogen receptor alpha and positive, definitively positive for estrogen receptor beta. Now, this study, if you really want to go read it and understand exactly how they came to this conclusion and what the the 
the makeup of the study was, where they actually found estrogen receptors, uh, estrogen receptor beta specifically, um, in 80% of the smooth muscle cells of the corpus cavernosum. I mean, th th this is fucking profound. And, you know, have a read. I'll link the study down in the description of this video. But what they go on to conclude is that in view of the observation that estrogen receptor beta is expressed in human penile vasculature and uh, urothelium in excess to the other sex steroid receptors. And I've covered this before. Estrogen receptors are actually, there's a greater degree of estrogen receptors than any sex steroid receptor in the male penis. Again, this is what makes this very confusing and lends some credence to the, the, the grassroots PSSD folks who are working on uh, theories, implementing theories regarding estradiol, exogenous estradiol, uh, in conjunction with androgens and the treatment of sexual dysfunction induced by SSRIs. They go, we propose that estrogen could play a significant role in penile blood vessel regulation and epithelial function, operating preferably on the ERB or estrogen receptor beta isoform. It can be suggested that estrogen's actions support resistance to increased mechanical and hemodynamic stress. Well, let's just think about that sentence for a second. It's suggested that estrogen's action supports resistance to increase mechanical and hemodynamic stress. Mechanical meaning erectile quality, hemodynamic meaning blood flow stress. There's a stress to those systems. Estradiol via regulatory effect in the blood vessels and the epithelial supports penile tissue in the presence of mechanical erectile dysfunction and hemodynamic blood flow stress. And that's according to another study, which is actually linked down below in, uh, in this study. And then they go estrogen maintain estrogen receptor binding maintains vascular tone and perhaps erectile function. Okay. Further studies will be needed to discover estrogen related regulated genes, especially those being controlled by the ERB or estrogen receptor beta in the male reproductive system and to clarify the possible involvement of aromatization of androgens to estrogen in penile tissue. We know, and if, if folks watching did not know that estrogens are, you know, one of the reasons they're cardioprotective is because they repair uh, what might be vascular injury. And they're very reparative and sort of supported to the, the, the lining of the blood vessels called the endothelium. This abstract titled Estrogen Receptors in Endothelium has a, a, a couple of gems. I'll read a couple of them quickly for you. They go both acetylcholine induced, so this is a neurotransmitter, and flow dependent vasodilation, the opening up of the blood vessels, are preserved or potentiated by estrogen treatment in both animal models and humans. Indeed, E2 increases the endothelial production of nitric oxide. <laughs> And it does all, it executes a lot of these benefits through endothelial mediated mechanisms. They go on to say E2 also promotes endothelial healing, healing of the endothelium, as well as angiogenesis or the spontaneous creation of new blood vessels. Okay, so all of this is pretty important in trying to, to make sense of why in the male penis there are loads of estrogen receptors and where inside penile tissues there are more estrogen receptors than there are any other steroid receptor. And there are locations in the penis where there aren't androgen receptors, but there are exclusively estrogen receptors and predominantly estrogen receptor beta. What does this mean? Well, what, what I think that it means is that in cases of vascular injury, which is induced by androgen deprivation, which is also a progenitor of estrogen deprivation, that in addition to androgens, because we've already proven how reparative they are to blood flow and penile function, they're, they're critical for maintaining erections and to repair erectile quality. In fact, androgens, but partially due to their aromatization into estrogens, can actually cure venous leakage if the androgen load is high enough. What I think this tells us is that estrogens might have a reparative role as well as a regulatory role in the mechanics and hemodynamics of the male erection. And as crazy as this sounds, based on this literature, it could be proposed that in cases of serious sexual dysfunction, exogenous estradiol, you know, maybe something like uh, estradiol enanthate in, in very small doses, I'm talking about 0.5 milligrams to a milligram every third day or so as an experiment, just sort of watching the bloods and watching blood pressure and watching some of these other things that might be affected by estradiol might be incredibly useful in conjunction with androgens, high doses of androgens, to fix vascular injury, endothelial problems, and ultimately restore erectile quality. 
again, you know, there are there's this subset of people on the post SSRI sexual dysfunction forums that are discussing the use and executing the use of exogenous estradiol in conjunction with androgens and seeing good results. I have had to infuse exogenous estradiol into, I wouldn't call it many people's protocols, but a, a, a good amount. I mean, I certainly have more than 10 people over the years that I've had to use exogenous estradiol. And these are cases where people can't tolerate aromatase inhibitors, but they might be using primobolin for the DHT binding. They might be using primo as an example for additional anabolism on top of their testosterone. They might be using, attempting to use primobolin to lower estradiol uh, block estrogen's conversion from testosterone, enhance a little bit of actual usable DHT in addition to longer potentiation binding at the AR, but it messes with their sexual function, right? We, it, it reduces their libido. So in those cases, these guys can take primobolin, but they've got to also be co-administering exogenous estradiol. Then everything stays in a favorable range and they're good. They gain muscle, they feel great and, and everything works well. We do also know that crashing estradiol with uh, aromatase inhibitors, whether it's aromacin or ribidex, zinc at high concentrations, primobolin masteron, which you know uh, blocks the ERs as well as inhibits aromatase to an extent. You usually, usually decreases people's libido to the point where not only they have erectile dysfunction, but they have no libido whatsoever. That's the case for me. You know, if estrogen goes too low, especially on an AI, but particularly when my androgens are very high, you couldn't make me interested in sex. I just, I just don't care. I think there's a lot more research to do on this matter, but I wanted to bring it to people's attention because it is important. And uh, this discussion has been going on for a while. And I don't want to say that, you know, we're going to look at estrogen differently because I, I think the state Staples still stand, like on low-dose TRT or just sort of regular-dose TRT, you got to keep estrogen in a reasonable range usually. It gets too high, you're going to start having erectile issues. Uh, that's pretty common, especially if you're in a lower-dose TRT. Lower-dose TRT, the lower you are on TRT doses, the lower the estrogen is going to have to be. Otherwise, you have an imbalance. You can't have too high estradiol and lower end testosterone, but still high testosterone. But uh, this opens up a discussion, at least, on specifically relative to these papers. You know, you got to look at these papers and understand that there's an interplay here. Uh, between estrogen receptors in penile tissue and vascular repair and potentially, again, mechanical and hemodynamic optimization resulting in a uh, resolution of longstanding erectile problems. But remember, this is always in the context and should always be in the context of super physiologic amounts of androgens. More to come on this, boys. More to come. And as I said in the beginning, look, I'm a coach on TRT protocol restructuring and sexual dysfunction primarily, especially libido and erectile issues, whether on TRT, not on TRT, coming off of steroid cycles or otherwise. You can hire me for any of the packages that we've got, one-on-one -on -one ongoing packages in under a minute at livecortex.com. If you just need redesign of your TRT protocol and no ongoing support, I've got a call for that that you can book in under a minute, livecortex.com or down the description of this video. Source list, if you need to take matters into your own hands, meaning getting a high potency exogenous DHT gel, exogenous DHT powder, mesterolone, uh, exogenous estradiol if you need to, test of all esters, HCG for far cheaper, Cialis, everything you can think of is on source. Let's get it live cortex.com. Sometimes you have to circumvent your clinic. Sometimes your clinic is not going to help you to dial in on TRT and you might have to take matters into your own hands. And again, Torque Stack, again, it's just a, a high performing stimulant, but which doesn't feel like it's overstimulating. It just makes you feel like a much better version of yourself. Uh, it's 20% off right now. Codes on the screen and down in the description of this video. All right, boys, it's been epic hanging out with you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, listen, like the video if, if, if you liked anything that I said, or if you were entertained in any capacity or got some useful information, it really makes a difference in the algorithm. So please hit the like button. Sub if you're new, okay? If you came to this channel from for whatever reason, searching something relative to the title or whatever, please sub to the channel because we got many more breakdowns on all of these topics multiple times a week in a live stream every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Otherwise, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Much more content coming soon. See you guys Saturday for a live stream, 9 a.m. I'll talk to you boys soon.